Hello folks and welcome to another lesson. This one is going out for Stephen D. Rhea, who won second place in a raffle that Sounds of Seattle were, um, were running. So I donated a, a lesson. So it's kind of a runner-up prize <laughs> which, uh, which Steve won. And he requested a Screaming Trees lesson, uh, which is brilliant because we haven't done a Screaming Trees one yet. So excellent selection, Steve. But I'm going to show you um, the tone that I'm using as well. And I'm using the 1991 pedal because um, I believe that Steve has that. So let's dive in and have a look. So we're in standard tuning, quick run through of the settings. We've got uh, the 1991 pedal with these settings for the main part. <laughs> You don't want too much distortion in this, to be honest, because um, you're going to be playing. You need those notes to. You need to be able to hear some of the individual notes when you're putting the um, the seventh note in. And for the incidental fills in the solo part, you're going to need a chorus. So I'm using the Jam Pedals Waterfall, absolutely glorious um, analog chorus pedal. And you can use any. Any chorus pedal will get you there, right? And any wah pedal, but I'm also using a jam pedals wah wah pedal because it's my fave and we're using that in the solo. So let's crack on and learn the first riff. Intro. That is basically a G to an A. To an E major. And that also forms a little part of the verse. I use the thumb over the top method. I mean, you could play it as a bar chord, but you've got to put in the sus4, which is this. So my little finger playing there. All right, but with the chord as well. So do that one of two ways. If you do it as a bar chord, you're going to need to flatten your, your little finger. And then that's how I would play the E in that um, shape. So, slowly, it's down, down, up, down, up. Repeat, two frets up. Open E. And the main verse riff goes like this. like that. So you're going to play an E major, but then you put your little finger on the third fret on the B to make it an E7, right? And the rhythm goes, you put that on the second beat, right? You add your little finger. So it's... Change to the C. So let me slow it down and play it cleanly so you can hear the rhythm. So it's quite strummy, right? But it's... Like that. And then you go back into... Right. So over the top of that, there are some fills. And they go like that. First one comes in after six beats. Um, so a bar and a half. And then you play... Alright, so it's... That's where it comes in in the tune, right? So you're basically going to be on the uh, 14th and 15th fret on the G and D string. And you're going to hammer on from the 14th to 16th. All right, and then you play. And this is all on the third string now, okay, on the G string. So you're going to play a, um, a very quick hammer on, a grace note hammer on twice. And then you move down to the 12th fret and play a triplet. And then you skip down the next string to play the 14th fret on the D, right? 
one little bit of the verse and then over the E part you play variation on a the theme right but you're gonna play this so a hammer on and then the 15th fret and you play that round three times then you play 16 14 and then same phrase as before, right? And you go around the verse a few more times. The last fill um, is pretty much the same as that, but it extends. So you play. And the rhythm behind this part is this. So just an E to a D to a C. And then you play. And that's the chorus part, okay? So the chorus part, um, it sounds like there's an extra bar of like 2 4 because coming out of this. So it sounds like the um, the G is kind of the, the strongest part of that. It sounds like that's a fill. Because that's where the singing comes in in the, in the verse. But I've written it um, in just in plain 4-4, four, four, so I've kept it simple. And you're going to play a C7 for two eighth notes, and then you take your little finger off. And then to a G. You could actually take your whole hand off the fretboard in between the C7 and the G, so you could play. And the rhythm's pretty straightforward as well. It's just two eighth notes. So after the three eighth notes, G, and then F. So you play two F and then to the C again, right? Now conceptually the solo is pretty straightforward. You're gonna play this riff. And you got so that's the general vibe, but if you want to learn it as close to as possible, then um, the first riff is going to be this. It's all E minor pentatonic stuff. I'll take the wire off for a sec. That's the first riff. And then for the second phrase, you just move down to the seventh fret. Something like that. Right, so you're going to play. I think he bends up the eighth and ninth fret ever so slightly. And then does another one of those. Little hammer on and. Uh, and on the upstroke, you catch the eighth and the ninth fret. But with the wire as well. Next part, you're going to go to some double stops and play. Play that. So that is just. Which is a double stop and then an immediate half step bend. So you push both of those notes up. Then down. And then that ending part again, right? And you move up to the 14th fret and the 15th fret on the G and the B with. With that, so that is just. And then you've got a bend of the 17th fret. Like that. Then you've got 
two more phrases that are very similar to back down on the sort of E minor pentatonic with. And then. Super simple phrases, but I'll play them slowly. So that one there, I'm bending. Hitting it again when, I, when it's bent up, right? Then two pull offs. Okay, second phrase is just very similar but with double stop. Just two bends. Let me see if I can play it all the way through. About right, and then you go back into and then there's a, a little breakdown part which I think just stays on the E chord throughout, and then you've got this outro chorus because I think it goes round the whole lot again. And you play um and I think you end on the C add nine. So you're gonna play So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed that one. See you again soon. Bye bye.